The reason why I do these things is, you know, maybe you guys hear an idea or something and you guys kind of implement it in your own life. This is a story about a dude named Lane. He moved to the mainland and bought one place to stay. And then one day he went and tried to rent them out. And then he became one real investor man. All right, welcome everybody. It is June 2020. This is the monthly market update. You guys can find past videos and reports at simplepassivecashflow.com slash investor letter. For those of you guys, uh, for a little thank you for coming, you guys can download the Easter egg of the month, which is the net worth tracker sheet that I created just recently. You can download it, this at simplepassivecashflow.com slash legacy. And what this cool spreadsheet is, you pretty much put in your, you know, how much money you have now, what's your interest rate, it assumed that you know of your investments you know if you're in the stocks and stuff like that I don't know why you want to do that you know, you'd put in like seven percent and then you also put in how much money you're saving every year most people in our community are, are probably saving thirty to fifty thousand uh, dollars you put in your age you put in your year and then it shows you um, a few different scenarios there's a bunch of tabs in here where it shows you growing at five ten fifteen percent and um, shows you how quickly your net worth grows. Kind of a fun sheet. You guys, again, you can get that at simplepassivecashflow.com slash legacy. A lot of news today we're gonna cover. Um, if you guys haven't, please check out the YouTube channel. We do a weekly podcast at Simple Passive Cashflow found on iTunes and Google Play. Something to start off for fun since I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of tired of all the politics of, you know, do we stay closed? Do we open up the economy? Um, got a little fun thing here. Everyone's been stuck at home, and here's a little diagram of what each state is watching for the most part. So we got a lot of trickies up in the Northwest. California watches Friends. Texas watches Friends. A lot of Friends in here kind of something fun to kind of break the ice here as we get into more of the news. And we're gonna start with a few teaching points. So this first graphic here we're showing, and for those who are listening on the podcast, we have this on the YouTube channel also, so you can see the graphics and slides. But, you know, people are always asking, you know, where is the residential market going? Is the prices gonna go up or down? So what they did here is they, overlaid in blue the great financial crisis of 2008 what happened and the orange line here is what is happening um, now with I guess they're calling it the, the great lockout or the great you know locked up at home pandemic so these lines are showing the the supply that out that is out on the market. So I guess what happens in the last you know few months is you know if you were an agent or you're a, a home seller what you probably did is you probably pulled it off the market so that when we are starting to open up right now, you can put it back up there. Or if you were on the verge of releasing the listing, you probably held it back. So, I mean, we're probably at, you know, 100 months average of supply in June and that dropped all the way to under, you know, 20% of that. And that was a, a sharp contrast to in the great financial crisis, it kind of stepped way down so what they're saying is because there isn't much supply purchaser demand is still there what we can say from that is you know maybe the price will probably level out and the balance between sellers and buyers will be the same so moving on to interest rates here is kind of where we've been with the feds front rate in red we are currently at zero percent as of a few months. But that doesn't necessarily mean that your guys' interest rates and our interest rates on our big commercial deals are going to come down too. You can see the, uh, the Fed fund rates and prime rates, they're correlated, but the, uh, the five-year arms, three-year mortgages, they, they're coming down slightly. I don't have a crystal ball, but I, I hear a lot of people are kind of refinancing and 
you know, I never, I never trust those loan brokers. They're always sneaky fellows just trying to get you guys to refinance every, every day. It seems like I would maybe, if I was doing it, I would probably wait maybe three to three to six months because they, they just dro dropped these Fed's fund rates a couple months ago. And I think where the interest rates are, I think it's still going to kind of follow it down even more. For those of you guys who have rental properties, I did a little bit video on loan forbearance options. It actually was pretty easy. I didn't really need to do this, but I just kind of wanted to see how easy it was. So I just, you know, I clicked on the, the links and I kind of followed it and I did a little screen share of me uh, applying for forbearance. And so you can check out the video at simplepassivecashflow.com slash forbearance. So what this is, is you're just kind of delaying your payments. You still got to pay, you, you got to have a big chunk when this thing runs out, I think mine's, I set it for three months, which is no problem. I got it in the bank, so it'll just pull three months from now. But, um, you know, some people are saying like, oh, it's going to tank your credit. And I don't think it really, I'd like to see an experiment of, you know, how much it really impacts it. If you're kind of hurting for cash to kind of stay afloat, um, you know, a lot of my dentist investors are kind of like that, you know, maybe something like this may be exactly what you need. We're going to get through some of the news here here i'm starting off with some headlines from cbre they kind of summarize exactly what's been happening two million jobs loss uh, unemployment rate 14.7 um not fun stuff but you know when you dig into here some of the interesting points are approximately 78 percent of the total unemployed were reported as furloughed or temporary indicating many of these jobs could return once the economy fully recovers. So that's good news. Unprecedented impact of COVID-19 has pushed the unemployment rate to a post-war high. But later on in the week, Seabury also uh, released a statement. You know, they're, they're expecting a rebound expected in Q3 after record drop in employment. Real estate recovery should follow beginning in 2021. Of course, as an investor, you're always buying individual deals, and each individual deal ne doesn't necessarily track the overall market. It's nice to have the trade winds of a bull market behind you. You know, for the most part, it's nice to see that the macro economy is looking to be pretty good in the second half of this year and, and beyond. Here's just a little summary of what's been happening. You know, and I think you know, this kind of goes without being said, but nice little graph outlining the percentage of population under states with uh, stay at home orders. We were pretty much all, you know, 85 and above percent were under lockdown April 22nd. And then April 29th, May 6th is when things start to open up. And then end of May was kind of the threshold where things start to open up to about 30%. And that kind of brings us to today where we're kind of slowing one by one, slowly reopening. First headline here, U.S. housing markets vulnerable to coronavirus impact clustered in the Northeast and Florida. This is from Adam Data. So they're looking at markets like New Jersey and Florida having 24 of the 50 most vulnerable counties. They named a few of these in New York, suburban areas, Virgin, Essex, Middlesex, Union counties. The 10 counties in Florida are concentrated in the northern and central sections of the state, include Flagler, Lake, Clay, Hernando, and Osorando counties. Other southern states that include the top 50s are spread across Delaware, Mar Maryland, North Carolina, South Carolina, Louisiana, and Virginia, but mostly in New Jersey and Florida. Multi-housing news reports that Common launches workforce housing grants. So Common is a company that they, they're now entering the workforce housing space, something that a lot of us investors enjoy because there's a sort of a housing shortage with housing, good, good value-based housing for regular people, which we call workforce housing or maybe B and C class assets. So I think through this whole COVID-19 pandemic, I mean, you're seeing office space getting killed, any like shopping mall or retail storefront getting killed other than shopping malls, of course, or sh it's not shopping malls, shopping malls are getting killed, but other than grocery stores, a lot of asset classes are just getting annihilated. Whereas the workforce housing, you know, a lot of our, our collections have been pretty strong through this and um, kind of riding this, this wave and, you know, valuations aren't really dropping. So you're seeing a lot of the bigger players kind of jump and shift from their original model and, and coming into workforce housing, which kind of says something. Another trend here, so 
popular popularity of search, search term home for rent by metro area. A lot of these were in the Georgias and Tennessees and Alabama, South Carolina. So a few of the movers in terms of, you know, they weren't that popular in terms of search rank and now that they are popular, um, the, the delta in rank are um, Mencanto, Minnesota, Autumn, Missouri, Lubbock, Texas, Durnfors, Ar Arkansas, um, just a lot of blue collar cities on this list. Ari Business Online reports a whole bunch of death in the retail space. I am sorry if you're saddened by the loss of these great companies such as JCPenney, filed for Chapter 11. Um, they are going to be doing some debt restructuring. Newman Marcus files Chapter 11. Lord & Taylor, I guess they're a, kind of an old school department store. And Tuesday Morning files for Chapter 11 also closing plans to close 230 of their stores. For those of you dudes out there who don't care about those brands, well, you might care about Goad's Gym filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy also. Currently closing 30 centers. I think that's been, this has been the trend even in a good market. You know, you'll see a lot of these, these retailers like Forever 21 um, close down, but you know, with the COVID-19, you're, you're seeing a lot of these guys accelerate these, the slow death. So this map here outlines the percent of adults in households where someone had a loss in an employment income since March 13. So some of the uh, losers are a lot of the uh, more coastal states, a lot of Washington, Oregon, Nevada, California, Hawaii. Other than that, you know, a lot of the, the plain states um, were less impacted, but still everybody's feeling the pain at between 30 to 60% where someone had a loss in employment income. John Burns Consulting, a uh, great source for really cool data, did a study and they had four big takeaways. So on the new home side, they said new home builders should capture the pent up demand from apartment dwellers, home buyers moving to cities, families wanting more space and residents relocating to jobs. You know, I think people being cooped up at, in their little apartments are probably realizing it's nicer to have a bigger space. But I'd argue as the uh, apartment investor myself, all right, well, everybody wants a bigger place to live, but when you got to pony up and pay the, uh, the mortgage and come up with the down payment, let's see who actually uh, can actually make that happen. Actually, we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, demand for mobile home parks. Um, applications have kind of gone up. You know, so the apartment people are kind of going to the mobile home parks or potentially it's the people having trouble paying their mortgage in their, their homes going to the, apart the mobile home park space because you know, mobile home parks are a little bit more independent living. You're not sharing walls with your, your fellow neighbors. From the apartment front, apartment renters may move closer to jobs and where cities, um, to cities where businesses are hiring. May, some may double down in larger units while others look for efficient spaces at lower absolute rents. I think the, the big trend that I've been hearing is, you know, like a lot of the very expensive cities like San Francisco, where you do have that, there's just too many people. It's hard to self-isolate in a big, you know, dense area like New York or San Francisco. People are realizing that they don't need to be there, especially with all the remote working. Those single family home rentals, they are saying single family rentals allow financial flexibility with privacy, with enhanced social distancing opportunities. Many will be renters by choice and will pay a premium to live in a dedicated community with other renters and community amenities. Point here on the commercial re real estate front, retail stores will remain open in the best locations and expect accelerated suburban mall redevelopment with some new housing. Some office, some markets will need more space and brand branded hotels with strict cleaning standards may benefit from business travel. They're basically saying the uh, the retail storefronts in the bad location are going to suffer. Yeah, this whole COVID-19 is just trimming the fat. Those weak and not positioned well are going to get cut. Multi-housing news reports that the coronavirus dense multifamily development. New supply expectations fall this year, and of course, due to all that's been happening, but future construction impact hinges on the downturn severity and length. This is something I've been uh, following and, you know, this 
development space is interesting to me. Um, there's still a strong d demand for demographics for um, these new builds. And they're saying that normally, or there was expected to be about 300,000 units coming online by the end of 2020. And that will likely be reduced to 250,000. So I think that's about a 20% decrease, I think, if I do my math right. So, uh, you know, if you're able to push through the project and get it to build, I mean, less competition out there. So let's talk about rent collections here. The month of May looks like the average was about 93.3%. Um, this is a 1.5 percentage point decrease from the previous month. So, I mean, on, on our portfolio of, you know, about 3,000 or so units, yeah, normally we're around 97%. You know, collections, you're always going to have a, you know, a few people out of 100 just be a, a deadbeat. And, you know, of course, that's where you have to go through the process to evict and go through the collections. But in you know, 90% sort of baseline, I think for April and May, we, some, we saw something similar. You know, it dropped a few percent points in April and then dropped another few percent points in May. So, you know, I think we're seeing the impact from COVID-19. Um, but this is exactly why you invest in workforce housing and rentals, because at the end of the day, people are making the choice to to stay in their homes and put, put shelter over their head. Are you a non-incredited investor looking for opportunities to invest passively? How about a newer investor looking to get a bit of a track record and confidence from your spouse, who's a little bit skeptic of what you've been listening to the last few months? And could you use the reinforcement of double-digit returns paid like clockwork in the form of monthly dividends? The American Home Preservation Fund, or AHP, is currently open again and is looking to bring new investors with them. I have been investing with them since 2016 and originally I used it as a means to pay for my regular expenses. I started with $60,000 as my initial investment and that paid my car payment completely for me every single month. HB collaborates with existing homeowners to keep them in their homes via restructuring or selling the debts unlike their competitors. It's a way to make great returns while feeling good about making a social impact. After investing myself in the fund, it was awesome when owner George Newberry saw the impact Simple Passive Cashflow was making and eventually approached me to become a spokesperson of the company. You can start investing with as little as 100 bucks. And if you want a free bird zone book, please send me an email at lane at simplepassivecashflow.com. For more information about investing with AHP, go to hpservicing.com slash investors. I like to buy stuff. Well, that's a liability. I think the one, the one takeaway or the one lesson learned I have coming out of this whole COVID-19 experience is that the Class C assets that we have are the ones that have the biggest collection issues and it, it makes sense right because these lower earning workers are the ones who are going to typically get cut the most um, we've got one property though in a class d but it's near like a grocery store and the grocery store was looking for uh, new workers because they increased demand so that was a nice little win there but you know, that's, that's an individual case. And, you know, a lot of what we talk about here on these monthly reports are macro concepts. But, you know, you investors out there are supposed to find those diamonds in the rough that kind of bump the trend or hopefully take advantage of the trend. And, you know, I was kind of talking about that National Real Estate Investor had an article on the outlook for Class C apartments is mud muddied by tenants' loss of income. So quote here, given the industries hit hardest in recent job cuts include the hospitality and retail sectors, loss of income has been especially prevalent in the Class C property renter base. That's especially problematic when few of those households have any financial cushion to fall back on. So, you know, why are the collections the hardest? Well, a lot of these guys, they don't have like thousand dollars or more in savings. So once they kind of dip into that, they're they're screwed and no, they're, they're just a hard place. So a little bit of good news and, you know, a few months of predominantly bad news. Um, but depends how you look at it, right? Like there's opportunity coming, of course, and um, another bull market coming. Um, so shopping center business says Papa John's, the pizza company, reports May as best sales month 
in restaurant history. Apparently, uh, people want their pizza when they're stuck at home. So that's the monthly um, news for June. Uh, the remainder of the presentation is mostly going to be surrounded up what I've been kind of personally up to and some of the takeaways that I've been having. If you guys would like to put in some questions, now is the time to do that. And we'll kind of catch it up there at the end. But let me get situated here and we'll get started with my... So I kind of break up what I'm up to in six big uh, categories. So the first one is, you know, growth. How did I kind of challenge myself and grow? Well, we haven't got the, pretty much got the official word, but we closed a 140 unit apartment complex in Lake Dallas, Texas. And I'm pretty happy because it's the first HUD loan that we've done. So these HUD loans, we'll do a future podcast on this, but HUD loans are the gold standard of agency financing. They are better than Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac debt in terms of amortization. You, you can get up to 40 years amortization and the interest rate is lower than what you'll get on a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. The only problem with these things, it takes like forever to get approved. Whereas a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac loan, you know, on an apartment, it'll take like a month or two to originate where these guys will take like four to six months. So and we've been kind of working on this since I believe October is when I first went out to Dallas to go check this one out. Yep, finally, um, great A-class asset in a A-minus kind of area. And these are the, the great things to um, just kind of convert your cash to as you know, these are commodity plays, right? With the stimulus money creating seemingly infinite amounts of fake money and debt, you know, the government's going to inflate the money supply. So owning properties like this is the way to go as they just inflate the debts and then you know hopefully your your properties will inflate in value with market appreciation I mean, we don't count on market appreciation we more count on the force appreciation that we do via the value add and rehab of units but um so that's icing on top of the cake that appreciation number two here contribution how do i leave a, a world a little bit better than i found it so we are looking to roll out the turnkey remote renter e-course to be completed next month we currently have a uh, mastermind for accredited investors that you guys can learn more about at simplepassivecashflow.com slash journey. It is filled with mostly accredited investors and something that I've been, I've been seeing in the past year is that, you know, there are some investors in there that are still trying to pick up their first rental property and they need a little bit more hands on. And I think there's a lot of other guys out there that they need the Rolodex and they, they didn't know who they're working with in terms of property managers, brokers, and that's something that we can supply along with the bi-weekly hand-holding and do it in a cost-efficient manner where, you know, I've, I've always been against people paying, you know, 10, 20, 30, $40,000 for a bunch of videos and some weak, you know, phone calls from some guy who didn't even own real estate before that works for one of these large education companies. So we are working to bring this out to you guys. It's going to be more of a boot camp style. Six, five, I think five months is kind of what we're targeting. It's an intensive period where you guys get our, we're going to kind of hold your hand to buy your first remote investment. You know, a lot of you guys live in California or a primary market, but you know, buying a property in Oklahoma, Alabama, Kansas City, and Naples is very daunting, especially if you don't know who to work with. So. Be on the lookout for that. If you guys are interested in joining the beta group, um, shoot me an email at lane at Simple Passive Cash to get more details. So number three, significance here. I just racked up um, all the numbers here lately. Our Guido Pipeline Club has acquired over $215 million of real estate. It's indicating over $30 million from you guys. Wow, that's a lot of money. We have 20 apartment buildings, seven manufacturing and home developments, and assisted living facility that's just got started uh, under construction, even though it's a little wet out there. It's been kind of slowing construction a little bit. 3,200 units, over nine U.S. markets, Alabama, Georgia, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Iowa, Texas, Missouri, Mississippi, and Ohio. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, some present numbers, and that's the end of me today, my heart. So number four here, how did I create uncertainty in my life? So sometimes I have to fight to kind of look for it, this, especially when I'm stuck at home. So I've been kind of learning about a new world of development with 
you know, this is, I came from the world of, you know, being a civil engineer as a project manager, you know, my role would be to bring on architects, permitters, engineers, and then bring on construction management to go and build a, a project with a contractor or builder. I'm kind of learn, learning the space in, from a more of a non-institutional type of money. When I mean that, instead of me being an owner for like a, a government agency or a big company, where there's like all this type of bureaucracy and like, you know, I mean, for those of you guys who, do, you know, a lot of professionals listen to this job. So we all deal with contractors, but you know, it's so annoying when you have to decide you have three candidates and you have to build this silly matrix and like and quantify, which was better based on some kind of silly rubric that you decided on beforehand. And, you know, I, I know how you guys all do it. I, you know, I used to kind of do it too, right? You, kind of disqualify certain vendors because they're not exactly what you want. But it's hard because on paper, it looks like the same, but you know who is the best value and the best um, vendor to work with. And what's nice when I'm kind of the developer, I don't have to deal with any of that nonsense. I can just pick what 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 is the best value for the owner and, and for you know us. So it's been liberating. And I think that's what really upset me and made me very jaded about working for a private company is that a lot of those those really pain in the butt type of activities are gone now and we can actually just get the business and roll up our sleeves and get get stuff done a lot of the same concepts again that's why it's eerily eerily familiar a lot of engineering and permits so I did a lot of horizontal construction, which is different than vertical, but you know it's essentially the same thing. Just um, some some nuances are different. How do I get certainty in my life? Well, I got my money out of that dang TSP program. For those of you guys, that's like the government 401k. Um, just clicked a few buttons. I had to have them send me my uh, TSP number like four times in the mail, which took forever. But I finally got my money money out, and I officially am 100% out of fake paper asset. So um, got that money, getting that money working. Last is a uh, loving connection. And the reason why I do these things is, you know, maybe you guys hear an idea or something and you guys kind of implement it in your own life. But you know, I made it a goal to connect with all 350 of my investors in my deals at least once a year, you know, touch base. You know, I, I want to know everybody kind of personally and uh, know who I'm working with. Um, so I spent the you know, last couple months, I think a lot of you guys have, We've kind of touched base and reconnected um, but I want to kind of carry this forward and make it a goal of mine to kind of keep doing this throughout the year even though we're not stuck at home under pandemic conditions those of you guys who um, haven't checked out the website or the YouTube channel lately um, check out the article on legacy some of my thoughts there on some trust ideas and building a nonprofit you can access that at simplepassivecashflow.com slash legacy. The trade line uh, guide and e-course is up. Uh, it's a simple side hustle on high made over a 10, gra 10 grand a year. Great for you guys who are not quite accredited and, you know, struggling to save up 20, 30 grand a year you know, and could use an extra $10,000 to go to investments. You know, try out some trade lining. You can check that out at simplepassivecashflow.com slash trade lines. And there's also uh, another hack with that to build your FICO score. I think you can boost your, your score pretty easy by 25, 50 points. So a lot of you guys looking to buy your own rental property, 680 is kind of the magic score that you need to get to get the highest interest rate. So if you're close, you know, maybe, maybe you should go authorize user on your mom's or your sister's or your buddy's credit card. That might, that might get it for you. You can check that out. Simple passive slash FICO. And you know, all the stuff we talk about here is just information, right? Consult your professionals. We are uh, just an information and entertainment podcast and YouTube channel here. Episode 200 was released a few weeks ago and I read my story. Um, simplepassivecashflow.com slash story. You guys can uh, read that there or listen to it there on a past podcast. And then I've been adding to our mindset guide, which is at simplepassivecashflow.com slash mindset. So if you ever 
kind of get stuck or you need some tips, um, go and check that out there. I discussed earlier uh, my video on how do you get a forbearance. You can check that out at simplepassivecashflow.com slash forbearance. And the, uh, the last entry that we made this month, the Simple Passive Cashflow Library, was uh, the second part of the David McAvaney interview. We talked about, you know, who's going to win the election. Of course, this was pre-COVID was when we recorded this. And uh, things really changed after that. But, you know, a lot of the same, now that we're kind of getting reopened, it's kind of like, I don't know if we can officially say this until six months, a year from now. But it does seem like this whole COVID thing was, is a black swan event that in terms of the economy. Um, of course, there's a lot of people unemployed, but it seems to me that things will kind of bounce back, certainly next year. So some barriers, distraction, noise that I've had to deal with is, um, you know, unfortunately, we had to delay distributions on a lot of the deals and, you know, due to COVID-19, because it just wasn't prudent for us to pay out money when we just in unprecedented pandemic times, you know, but, um, you know, as of yesterday, we, we press and just press go on four projects to just cut loose distribution because we're kind of seeing how the, this June collections are coming in and you know, kind of in within expectations. So we feel that April collections, May collections was kind of uh, kind of knocking on wood there. And then June was kind of the last of it. And I think we're kind of coming out of this thing. Of course, knock on wood one more time. Hopefully we don't see any kind of um, resurgence. Um, but, you know, if we did see a resurgence, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a stimulus number four that really helps more passive investors like us because the first three stimulus packages didn't really help us passive investors out. And I'm sure those in power are really trying to slip that thing in there. Um, one little weakness or hint of a second wave, I think they're going to get everybody up in a frenzy and make a push to put in another 700 page stimulus package. And uh, hopefully there's some goodies in there for us. Those of us who buy real assets, some doodads I've been buying. Well, I've been running up a lot of air conditioner. It's been hot here at home and I am tired of fighting and saving money and being hot and being grumpy and unproductive. So I just said, Screw it, I'm just going to pay for air conditioning and pay the electricity. In case you guys are wondering, like I think my electricity bill here in Hawaii, you gotta understand that we have like single ply walls and horrible insulation, but I think we pay like 200 bucks a month. I don't know how much it is in other places, but you know, we hardly pay anything in the, in the winter time when it's cold for us. We don't have no heat. Those of you guys who would like to join our book club, you can check out simplepassivecashflow.com slash lane hat. The lesson learned for me this much is, you know, I've been really relying on my coach, personal coach. And they help me out with keeping me accountable. And you know, I've been, I have these like sticky notes here and I write little messages to myself and I keep myself accountable. And lately what I've had to do is I type up what I did that day and I send it to them and I don't know if they read it, but it certainly keeps me accountable and keeps me rechecking in on kind of making progress. You know, I'm not saying you have to pay for a coach or anything, but if you got a, a buddy, an accountability buddy that really helps, um, maybe they shoot you what they did the last couple of days and you just reciprocate. And that is the end of this month's presentation. Again, here is the legal disclaimer. We are just giving um, informational and entertainment advice. Hopefully we can get out and I can meet you guys again. I'm looking to do a trip out to Cleveland and Huntsville later on this month. So if you guys would like to join me, um, shoot me an email, Lane at Simple Passive Cashflow. Maybe we can sync up. Um, would love to, you know, show you what we do and you know just walk some properties with us, with us you know, have some dinner after. Check out more events at simplepassivecashflow.com slash events. And if you're new to real estate investing, go to simplepassivecashflow.com slash start. And uh, thanks for, if we don't have any questions, uh, we will see you guys next month. Aloha. This website offers very general information concerning real estate for investment purposes. Every investor situation is unique. Always seek the services of licensed third-party appraisers and inspectors to verify the value and condition of any property you intend to purchase. Use the services of professional title and escrow companies and licensed tax, investment, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed as in every investment there is risk. The content found here is just my opinion and things change and I reserve the right to change my mind. 
Above all else, do your own analysis and think for yourself because in the end, you are the only person 